This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Cruise Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the on air. The air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Cruise Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Welcome to Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, ready to take you on a virtual ride around the automotive industry. Les is ready. You've been preparing for this for quite some time, haven't you, Les? Uh, virtually, yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. But but we are, in fact, driving new vehicles. That's uh, right. It's just that we don't have any passengers. That's right. Uh, and we're wiping the vehicles down when they come to us, but we are in them. I'm just fogging them just with, with uh, you know, all yeah. kinds of uh, chemicals uh, to, to keep the germs I'm, down. I'm wearing a hazmat suit. All right. Well, let's jump into our first story, and it is from Hyundai. Hyundai's got big plans for electric vehicles. We'll take a look at their project plug-in roster. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's getting exciting. And two more online reveals are in the works, this time from Jeep and Honda. Boy, there seems like there's one every week. They had the uh, transit uh, van, electric van this week. That's right. Yep. And Lexus puts the refresh on its flagship LS sedan. That's a beautiful vehicle. I drove one of them over the summer, did an at-the-wheel review. Amazing. You know, I, the first one of the first cars I ever tested was an LS, and that was 1990. Wow. Man, what a great car. Anyway, is one manufacturer bringing back four-wheel steering? Interesting. Yeah. You know, there was one car that had it. There was a couple of cars, actually. Yeah. We got it posted up on our Facebook page. It was the Honda Prelude. Can't forget about That's the Prelude. That's true. And Ford Mustang... The Ford Mustang Mach-E electric crossover is just about in showrooms, Les Jackson. It is, a matter of fact, at many dealerships already. We figured we needed an update on what's going on. So Lisa Teed, brand manager for the Mach-E Mustang, will be joining us. All that and more when we get rolling on this edition of Cruise Control Radio with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We are glad... You are here because we've got all that to get to and more. Don't forget, check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com, where you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. It's all there, CruiseControlRadio.com. Going to have some pictures up of the Mach-E, too. I am pretty excited about the Mach-E. I saw it about a year ago, got a chance to sit in it. I think you did, too, didn't you? I did, too. Uh, I'm very excited. It's it's very Mustang-ish. Yeah, it is called the Mustang Mach-E. Yeah. It, it, it's not like it's, uh, well, it sort of looks like it. It is called a Mustang, much to the chagrin of some people. But, uh, hey, we will get the details on that and a whole lot more when we come back on Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine. Keep it buckled up because we are just getting started. Listen to the live feed of Cruise Control Radio every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Go to www.cruisecontrolradio.com to find out how to do it. Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Les and Fred here, and we are excited about Hyundai because they have just announced a big EV a thon. How's that for a word? <laughs> EV a thon. Uh, the EV a thon. Uh, 10 of them, 10 count them, by the end of 2022 are going to be EV versions or EV period. Yeah. Uh, but uh, seven of them are SUVs. That's no, that's no <laughs> surprise. No. Seven of everything is an SUV. Yeah. Some of these, I mean, you and I drove the Sonata Hybrid. Of course, this is oh, their it's terrific. This is what they call their eco focus lineup to 10 models to 2022. I mean, 2022 model year is basically here. It's basically well, that here. That means that means that basically after January, which is 60 days away, 
they can introduce a 2022 model. Okay. So let's run them down. Hybrids. And remember, electrified means it can be anything. It can be a hybrid. It can be a plug-in hybrid. It can be a full battery electric vehicle. It can be anything like that, right? That's uh, right. And they're calling this eco-focus. So it also includes the Nexto fuel cell vehicle. What do you think of that yes. name, Nexto? I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like it, the... and I kind of dislike it. You know, I don't know. I how... don't really like it. I, I actually introduced everyone to the Nexto last year at the DC Auto Show. Mm -hmm. um, they had one there, a prototype, and it's really nice. It looks nice. Uh, but the name just is, it's sort of uninteresting. It might be a little cheap sounding like uh, uh, nexto brand cleans your cleans yeah. your drains maybe maybe they kind of think of it as the the next step in i guess car so. world but it, it's just not an interesting name to me well that's coming and then the the uh of course they already have the kona electric vehicle that's right ionique 5 and ionique 6 are coming that's right the five is an SUV. The six is a car. A car, Fred. I know. If <laughs> I, I'm, and I'm going to go back because I think I like that Nexto name better now than five or six. I only think five or six. I'm just yeah. going to say, yeah. Uh, they've got plug-in hybrids: the Tucson and the Santa Fe. I think you know there are some people that that down plug-in hybrids. Basically, it gives you range of maybe. 25 35 miles on electric if you plug right. it in when it's that practical. electric goes away it, it becomes a a regular gas hybrid vehicle and you can go on your way until your gasoline runs out just like any vehicle some That's people right. put Those them are, down i think they're great i think i think they're great too but people don't really understand them um but good for hyundai because the santa fe and the tucson are two incredibly popular SUVs that yeah. they sell. Yeah, uh, and they're both uh, great-looking vehicles. And uh, actually, the Santa Fe is quite a large vehicle, so I think that's great. Best of all worlds, you can have the electric vehicle during the week and then the um, hybrid for longer trips, no range and anxiety whatsoever. And then they have a full roster of hybrid vehicles. So of uh, the Elantra, which I have not driven, the Sonata Hybrid, which we have both driven, the one with the solar panel on the roof. Superb. Loved it. Loved it. Crazy mileage. Crazy high-end mileage. The Tucson and the Santa Fe also uh, come in hybrid only as opposed to plug-in hybrid. So they right. don't get the that 30-mile range. You know what? You, people get uh, confused when it comes into plug-in hybrids. They say, oh, it's only got a 30-mile range. Well, that's on full electric. It goes yeah, right. it goes many hundreds of miles after that on hybrid mode. So exactly. And a and a regular hybrid, you, you typically you have maybe a two to three mile range on electric at very low speed. Yeah, very low and very, very small parameters to do it. I mean, yeah. you know, low speed typically in reverse. They make them that's that's true. But if you have a plug in Think about all the times in the suburbs you move your car just a little bit. You move it out of the driveway so your wife can get in. You 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 move it down the <laughs> some of us move them down over to the mailbox <laughs> because we're too lazy. Well, it's raining. <laughs> oh so boy. We're too lazy to walk. Uh-huh. But the fact is, you know, little things where you're using it just to go a little way. Well, also, too, remember, you start your vehicle up. When I move my vehicle up back in down the driveway, it's very rich. It's starting up. Not particularly right. great for the vehicle just to move it back and move it up. It's where one of these plug-in hybrids would come in. You'd just be moving it back and forth with Makes electric motors. Sense. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, the onslaught of new models continues. Two more online reveals this week coming up. So stay tuned to Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine. We'll be right back.
For the latest updates on cruise control, follow us on Twitter at Cruise Control Rad. That's C R U I S E C T R L R A D. Cruise Control Rad. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control Radio. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. Your dial to cruisecontrolradio.com. We're glad you're here for your on air automotive magazine. You know, if anything, I will remember during this whole time of the COVID crisis, the pandemic, lots of online reveals. I think it's a better way to do it, Les Jackson, because, you know, the car shows revealing vehicles and running from one to the other. I couldn't see him here. I get the information. And we've got two more coming. I, I haven't tallied it up how many have been revealed since car shows shut down and things like that. But we've got two more coming up. We have one one this past week and two more coming up this week. So let's talk about the ones that are coming up. Jeep says, be prepared for, for a reveal this week. They're not saying what it is, but we know what it is. It's going to be the Grand Cherokee. That's exactly right. Um, again, very popular. Uh, they They continue to refresh it often enough that it always appeals to people. Yeah. So uh, it's supposedly they're, they're going to really step it up, but we don't know much about it, but we'll learn about it and get back to you. Right. Yeah. And then but, you've got another one, right? That's yeah, happening this week on November 17th. That's right. On the other side <laughs> of the, of the vehicle size category, Honda Civic, which is a, you know, Boy, it's a great car. They've been around. That model has been around since the 70s. Right. And everybody loves them. Um, they're they're terrific. They've got uh, some prototypes coming on November 17th. We're going to be in on the virtual reveal. Yeah, it's going to be on the Twitch channel, which is Twitch. a gaming channel. So obviously making the play to younger drivers. It's the all-new 11th generation Civic. Wow. <laughs> that's 11 generations um and uh, twitch is a gaming channel it's all about gaming so obviously appealing to uh gamers tech people and potentially a younger crowd right so you would think you're, or you would in you would imply that uh, it's going to have a lot of electronics on that dash i would say i would say it would yep I think it will. You know, I think they want to go the way of Tesla, where you can have games uh, on on your screen. I know. I I just find that weird because I think you should. Well, so do I. But (laughs) but, uh, but I understand the appeal. Uh, It just doesn't appeal to me. No, no, that's true. And, uh, you know, but we are excited about the car. Uh, There's a Honda stage artist, Corday, will give a live performance. Uh, and he's it's very, he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> he's very good at whatever he does. I, we're not I quite sure what he does, but he's really right. good at it. So he's been I working. Just, I just, I wanted to sound like I was, you know, hip. Well, you did, you did there yeah. for just a brief <laughs> moment, but, uh, but it'll be entertaining for sure. Yes. The other thing that was revealed this week was the 2022 Ford E-Transit, which is yeah. an all-electric version of the world's best-selling cargo van. Um, and interesting, they're going to have all the models available in electric, the cutaway model, which is just the cab, the uh, high roof, the low roof. Uh, it will have all the accessories you can get in a typical van, the racks and, and things like that. And uh, it, I believe it's going to have a range, if I am reading this correctly, of about 130 miles, uh, which is not bad. Fast charging, 45 miles of range in 15 minutes. And uh, it's going to have a, four, a, four GT, a 4G LTE modem. Yes, not a GT. Not a GT. <laughs> it's not going to have a 4 GT in the back. No. Um, no. And I think this is great. And it's perfect for fleets. And I'll bring this up to you, Les, because this is one thing I didn't understand. The U.S. Postal Service 
is trying to replace their vehicles, which are very old, which they probably should replace. Um, but they're trying to do this very expensive one-off kind of, um, you know, van uh, that's very expensive to build. It has to be built from scratch. Why not buy something like an e-transit? You know yeah, why? why? Because you can get right-hand drive from, you know, they build it for that's Europe. That's right. And that's a big thing for the post office. And if you tell Ford, uh, we want to buy 200,000 transits modified in this particular way. They'll do it. Do it for a relatively minor extra money. Yeah. And, you know, I just don't know why they have to reinvent the wheel, the postal service, when they could buy something like this, which makes more sense to me. It makes no sense. They, you know, they may, I think we'll find out that they, they'll make some other decisions. Yeah, because some of those prototypes are ugh, ugly. Well, yeah. But, uh, and and expensive whenever you got to build it. Take something off the shelf. Well, the Navy That's what has the a term Army's for that. doing. Yeah, yeah. Of, off the shelf. They have an acronym for it. But to me, that makes makes better sense to get like a Ford Transit or some of the other vehicles that will be coming up that will be available, that will be being used by Amazon, things like that. Hey, uh, four-wheel steering, a little bit of a history lesson here. Uh, one of the cars to have it, one of the first cars to have it was the Honda Prelude. We have a little post of that on our website, yeah. uh, uh, on our Facebook page, you should say. If you go over there, check that out and give us a like. We appreciate it. Um, and four-wheel steering, I remember when it came out, and it just a little bit of motion in the rear wheels, but it supposedly was an incredible option, expensive option at the time, $1,500. Then remember, GMC did this called Quadra Steer. For, which we actually tried on an event. Yep. Um, and, very impressive, but and it was too expensive. Too expensive. Well, now there is a rumor that both the new upcoming Toyota 86 and the Subaru BRZ, those kind of fun rear-wheel drive vehicles, will get rear-wheel steering. Because uh, Subaru's got a teaser video up that appears to show the Subaru BRZ with rear steering, which is kind of interesting that they would do that because it is, you know, a fairly affordable car, but... You know, if you put this in, uh, it would be it would be increasing the price tremendously. Well, it, it? would uh, probably you know upwards of a thousand dollars, maybe. But you know, these are cars that already have great handling. Yeah, they do. If you put four wheel steering in it, it's going to handle like a tarantula wearing track shoes. <laughs> That's a lot of track shoes. That's a lot of track. I mean, uh, why do they need it in those models? I don't know. I don't know, uh, and unless they're going to build a higher horsepower variant, hmm. you know, could they hmm. build an all-wheel drive version of it? I don't think they could fit an all-wheel drive drivetrain under that. I don't think that. so. But we'll have to see. And it's just, it, it made me think about the Prelude, how ahead of time, <laughs> that uh, ahead it, of it history really that was. was. Yeah. It, it really was. And there was a Porsche that had... Or was it Mitsubishi that had a just a tiny bit, like two degrees of yeah. rear wheel steering? The only place you see see it now pretty commonly is on large buses, where they had right. where it steers. You and I have been standing there where buses go by, and so you notice the wheels are like a couple of degrees, the rear wheels when they go yeah. around a, a turn, and it just helps make it turn a little bit tighter. Hey, when we come back, we got a great interview for you, you know, because Ford has this incredible Mustang Mach-E crossover coming up. We've been talking about it. I remember seeing it about a year ago. Hard to believe. And now it is coming to the uh, dealers, Les, and it's pretty exciting. We wanted to get an update on what's going on. And Lisa Teed, who is the brand marketing manager for the Mustang Mach-E, will be joining us after the break. Uh, pretty incredible deal, this vehicle, and Ford taking some big steps here. We will talk about it when we come back on Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. 
Don't forget, check us out at our Facebook page. We got pictures up there of the Honda Prelude and now the Mustang Mach-E. So go over there and give us a like. We appreciate it. We'll be right back. Cruise Control Radio goes live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. To listen, click the link on our homepage. Go to www.cruisecontrolradio.com. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. We're glad you dialed into your on-air automotive magazine. Check us out at Facebook, where you can see some great pictures of the Mustang Mach-E. And Les, you and I have been talking about this vehicle for some time. I saw it about a year ago. Was Me too. Very, very impressed with it. It was just a static uh, display, but we got a chance to sit in it. And now it's making its way to dealers, and the plan is coming to fruition. And uh, mm-hmm. we wanted to know a little bit more about it, get an update on it. So we've got... Lisa Teed, who is the brand marketing manager for Mustang Mach-E. Lisa, welcome to Cruise Everyone. Control Radio. Uh, pretty Thank coo- you. Pretty cool. This project's been underway for some time, and now these vehicles are getting to the dealers. you got to be excited. It's an extraordinarily exciting time. It's one thing to launch a vehicle, and if you've ever had an opportunity to be close to that, there's a lot of work and planning, not just engineering, production. It's the whole the whole family has to get together and work together. Now, for the first time, Ford has what we consider the most dynamic vehicle coming to market, which is the all-electric Mustang Mach-E, because it is a new era for us, and um, it's got to be flawless. But the best thing, it's on plan and on time. So at the end of this year, you'll see them rolling out of the plant. Oh, that, that, well, that's pretty exciting, Les. It is exciting. And, and you know, the Mustang itself was a was a watershed moment groundbreaking and it's perfectly fitting that the Mach-E also uh, you know take that mantle and move on we're very big on electric vehicles Um, and the one that I sat in it still felt like a Mustang it didn't look that much like a Mustang obviously because it's uh, it's a small SUV shape but Mm -hmm. um, it it just looks like it's a lot of fun to drive uh, have, have you spent lots yeah of hours so when you're that? working at ford and the brand manager you do get the privilege of having prototype access oh. so i've brought them home many a time <laughs> i've had them for weekends i've had the privilege of not just um and, and i don't say not just driving it but the point is when you drive it you have to have time to drive it and different experiences with driving it mm-hmm. and i've it is an unbelievable vehicle. Now, you're going to say, well, I can't imagine what unbelievable means. The first thing you do when you get in the car, and what I do is right away is get the seatbelt on, and I want to go. Like, I'm not going to read the manual, right? And that was, I was like acting like every other customer. You get in, you're ready to go, and you want to see what's going to happen. And because of the all-electric power source and on the all-electric all-wheel drive, it's not about traction. It's about putting that power down off of those electric motors, and you get to go. Mm-hmm. Not just from a zero start in, in the middle of a, a tur- coming out of a turn, you know, onto an on-ramp going onto the freeway, or it's just this really quick, responsive, super nimble, but you've got this command control with that steering wheel, just like a Mustang does. So it, it was designed to drive like a Mustang. What's different is the power source with that unbelievable torque that you have underfoot pretty much all the time. And then it gets pushed down onto the ground through those electric all-wheel drive um, um, motors. And it's on the front and the back axle. So you can also get the rear wheel drive version, obviously, but if you really want to get more torque down, more power down, you go to the electric all wheel drive and it is dynamic. That's the thing. I always tell people, Lisa, if they have never driven an electric car, they should, because when you hit that pedal, it goes, there's no shifting gears. There's no downshifting. There's no fussing around. It just goes and it's like an on switch and, and you're off. And it's pretty amazing. I think people have to get in them to try them. Uh, and I don't know if Ford is, is going to have a special situation for people to get in them and, and try them. Because once they try them, they'll be really sold on it. So from a driving dynamics, handling, performance, responsiveness, just feeling like you are have a fun to drive car, this is going to deliver on that. 
But I think you had mentioned earlier from a styling that you say, you know, you get into it, it feels like a Mustang, but it doesn't look like a Mustang. And that's where our true loyalists are kind of probably in the same mode. Like, what is this thing going to drive like? Let me prove to myself if I like it or not. And I think that's going to be the surprise and delight because you're going to be just tickled at how it drives. And when we designed it from a Ford engineering and it, in the DNA of the, the true Mustang soul, they needed to get as close to that soul as possible. So there are exterior design cues that you can pick up as Mustang. But when you're inside, it will drive like a Mustang. And that's an engineering, not feet, but that's engineering acumen to know what a Mustang should feel like, what a Mustang does feel like, and will you get to experience that? So we have these things called drive modes on the Mustang as well, the Mustang Mach-E. And you were talking about no shifting because we only have a one-speed transmission, right? But we have these drive modes that give you this sense of deacceleration. So in our one mode that you can select is called unbridled. And it will give you that most dynamic driving response as if you had your foot truly on a pedal with a gear shifter. And so basically you, you can jam on it hard. And as soon as you take it off, it deaccelerates much more aggressively than just a coast mode. And by getting that, then all of a sudden you're feeling like I can play in the corners now. I can give it, I can pull it back. I don't have to get on my foot to break because that deacceleration kicks in and it's a throttle response. It's an input output and it's very aggressive, but it's intentional because if you want to drive in that aggressive style. Now, if you're saying that's not for me today, I, I just need to cruise and coast <laughs> and I don't feel like doing that. You go to the opposite of the spectrum called whisper. And you get this gliding sensation. The vehicle is very quiet. It's not a floating. It's just a very calming experience. And remember, there's no engine, so there's no exhaust noise. Right. Um, and it is so pleasant because the, the vehicle is very flat. And it just it, it's just very impressive how you can get two different experiences in the same, same day, same moment, just depending on what you choose to put it into. So, and then we have one pedal driving, which I want to get into next, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. So one pedal driving, and it's very unfamiliar to probably most drivers, it's where the accelerator pedal is essentially your brake pedal as well. Mm -hmm. So if I want to brake, normally you take your foot off the accelerator, you jump on the brakes to slow down. Here, the one pedal driving, it is incorporated into that accelerator pedal. So it's even further deacceleration than what I was just describing in Unbridled. And once you learn how to use it, the vehicle, basically, if you take your foot off the accelerator and don't put on the brake, the vehicle is braking down to a complete stop Absolutely. in a very comfortable manner. And it really works for city driving, traffic, a lot of you know congestion driving, where you just basically know how much to lift off and you will basically slow down to a stop. Now, I, I agree completely with Lisa. We're talking with Lisa Teed, who is the brand marketing manager for Mustang Mach-E. And... I have done that in other vehicles, not not a uh, Mach-E <laughs> yet, but it is a great way to drive. It really is. Now, I will call it, and don't take this in the negative way, it's sort of like driving a golf cart, but it is much nicer than that. It is really, as you say, <laughs> yeah. when you get used to it, you can bring the vehicle to a complete stop, and it's a very cool way to drive with one pedal. It really is, and something that takes a little getting used to, but... The other thing people say, oh, electric cars, they're not going to be powerful. I've got to just shout out these numbers here. The uh, Mach-E is going to have 332 horsepower, 417 pound-feet of torque. That's what you say you're targeting, uh, which uh, uh, will give it a quicker 0 to 60 mile per hour time than the base Porsche um, uh, Macan. And uh, then also... Uh, you, if you need more, the GT Performance Edition, which is coming a little bit later, will have 459 horsepower, 612 pound-feet of torque. It sounds almost like a diesel <laughs> engine with that torque, but that is, that's, that's amazing numbers. And if anyone yeah. thinks electric cars are, oh, it's just this little, you know, small uh, golf cart to get around in and basic transportation— they should just look at those numbers because those are huge numbers for any car. Yeah, we get into when we get into our GT derivative of the Mustang Mach-E, which we haven't shared the full story yet. And there will be news coming um, in about a month or so. Well, we'll give you the rest of the story. But just to give you a foreshadowing, the Mustang Mach-E GT and GT Performance Edition are going to be our supercar equivalents to what most people don't realize we have a supercar 
much less from an all electric vehicle in the Ford portfolio. So if you are an enthusiast or you're someone that desires that kind of uh, performance or just says, I, I want it. I want to have the full, I want to have all of it in my hands and on my feet. That is the one vehicle that will be so aspirational. And it is, and I consider our engineers marbles because to get to those levels of performance for your zero to sixties and put that power down, sustain that torque curve and give you that dynamic tuning and experience. It takes incredible engineering because you're not just running with your normal brakes and your calipers and your, your rims and your tires, everything gets elevated to be able to give you and deliver you the experience that you want from a true performance. So when it comes back to the promise of being a Mustang, we had a commitment that we weren't gonna just lightly put the pony on any vehicle. It mm -hmm. had to deliver what we consider to be true Mustang DNA. And DNA of Mustang is not just exterior styling, it is also the true heart and soul, which is the performance. And I will promise you these vehicles will deliver it. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Lisa Teed, who's brand marketing manager for the Mach-E. So stay tuned. More power coming up on Cruise Control Radio. We'll be right back. Cruise Control Radio goes live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. To listen, click the link on our homepage. Go to www.cruisecontrolradio.com. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control Radio with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We're glad you're along for the ride. Don't forget, check us out at our Facebook page. You can throw us a like while you're there. We've got some pictures of the Mustang Mach-E up there for your enjoyment. And we are talking to Lisa Teed, who is the brand marketing manager for the Mustang Mach-E. Lisa, when this project got started, I would imagine you were there probably from the early days. Was there hand wringing by some about calling it a Mustang? Uh, we don't, we, we made the decision to call it a Mustang. It wasn't just a call it a Mustang. It had to be a Mustang. And that was the, I guess that was the minimum requirement coming straight from Bill Ford, like mm -hmm. you know, all the way to the top. If this is going to be a Mustang, it has to be a Mustang. So that's been our founding principles behind the vehicle. And from a performance, we can definitely check the box when it comes to taking the Mustang to another level, what else can be added to the Mustang mm -hmm. family? Not, not, you know, as a saying Mustangs no longer to be what it is known for. This is an, a new family member, incremental, expanding the portfolio of the product of Mustang. And so therefore we went down this path to say, instead of being an I car, it can be a we car. And a we car means that it's everything Mustang is known for, but now I can bring people and stuff with me and sure. still make it fun to drive. And that's where the SUV body style uh, came from. And then obviously with the battery now under the floor, meaning underneath the driver and passenger seats, we have this unbelievable ability to take cargo and stuff because the seats fold flat. So now you can take your things mm -hmm. and go the distance on all electric and still have that fun to drive Mustang we sh we um, should, requirement. We should talk about the, the frunk because there's some fun stuff you can oh, do yeah. with that. <laughs> Well, we call it the front trunk, but uh, that's okay. Is it's that's another manufacturer, the frunk, right? I don't know whether that's yeah. become like Band-Aid, you know, like like a, a generic yeah, name it's... for that space in cars nowadays. But but it is fun to talk about, and uh, it's usually a surprise. So the it... surprise is when you open the front hood, you're not seeing a, a combustible engine. There's no engine in there, and you've got this big cargo space. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, what do I put in there now? Like, what could I put in there? Like, I never thought to put anything in there. So we've done some experiments where we have a drain hole in there. You can fill it up with ice if that's something you want to do because you happen to <laughs> well, be socialized in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> I do think you're right. You know, you can put, you know, your little sound box in there. You can put your folding, you know, blankets in your, you know, your picnic wear if you want or your sports shoes that stink. It's completely great usable space. <laughs> well, you know, the Mustang has always been the, the, the go-have-fun car. Now you can tailgate, but you're not even, you have a tailgate, yeah. but you have a front gate, too. Well, now you won't have to back in. That's right. You can, or a reverse uh, park cover right. that, Eric's. Yeah. <laughs> we have, like, all sorts of small car shows here in, my, in the village that I live in. 
And people have to, you know, position just right because they want to show off their car. A lot of times they want to show off the engine. Here we're going to show off our, you know, our snacks. We our can cold, go trick or cold drinks. Yeah, yeah. There you go. The, now you talked about bringing the prototypes home. What is that like when you bring it home? And can you show it to people, or do you just have to? Oh, absolutely. Your neighbors, yeah, yeah. you just kind of ignore it, like, oh, it's just a car. It's a funny situation because, and it, first and foremost, on the commute to where I'm going, there's so many onlookers. People will be flying by me, and all of a sudden they put their brake lights on, they slow down, and Hold they'll have people camera. in the car taking pictures of yeah. me and oh, yeah. smiling, waving, and putting my window down. And is that real? Is that it's the first one I've ever seen? I've gotten pulled over so many times. Even if I happen to be, you know, just in a parking spot, people come up to me or charging. It is a magnet for conversations. But when I do bring it home, there are definitely rules of the road for engagement with Ford Motor Company. So I'm the only one allowed to drive it. Um, clearly, if it's in my my parking lot at my house or in my garage, I'm very welcome to show people. I mean, I've done, I can't tell you how many personal walk arounds because there's just so many people that are just so intrigued Sure. Um, by what is it? Where's the battery? How far does it go? Is it really a Mustang? Ooh, those, it, the interior is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It is certainly tech forward. So we're taking also Mustang to another, where can you go next with it? So with that 15 inch touch screen, which is your command center, it is so beautiful and it's so simplified, um, the interior space and you just feel uncluttered, but basically the phone, which we all live by our phones, at least most of us do, you go from being in your hand, you get in the car and your vehicle becomes like your phone. I mean, mm -hmm. it's all right there on that touch pad and you're fully integrated, fully connected. It's just, it's like, it's almost the extension of you. The car becomes everything that you are generally with you and your phone. Yeah. So and, it's great. and you talk about some of that uh, with the navigation system and some of the sync system, it's going to kind of learn what you like. And I always thought that was important. Like navigations. I'll give you an example. When we go to visit the uh, mother and father-in-law, there's one bridge I don't want to take because it will mean an hour traffic jam. And But it is going out of the way. It is going 20 minutes out of the way. I don't care. It ends up being less time when I take this longer way around this bridge. But most navigation systems will just try to force you to the shortest way no matter what. Right. But like this system, I imagine it's saying like, well, Fred... You know, I know every time you take this route, you avoid this bridge. So I'm going to avoid this bridge right away because I know you don't like it. And that's kind of an example of what's going to happen with this new system. It will get to know you more and kind of uh, say, hey, I know you like to get coffee. <laughs> there's a there's a Dunkin Donuts <laughs> coming up on the corner there. Well, so I'll take your storyline. So literally, I use the car with the navigation and it's cloud connected. So it's real time. So not only if there's like an accident on the road that's going to cause a delay on your preferred route, it tells you how much battery you have between where you're going and where you want to be, and it'll make recommendations. There's a charging station here. It's available. If you stop there even for six minutes, it'll replenish the additional energy you need so you can get there with confidence and also get back home. So it's giving you not just this charging station and what it can do if it's available. It's also saying if you pass that one up. Here's this other one that will take you, you know, it's a different rate of speed. It is available, but then you're going to need a little bit more charging because you burn that much up. So it's constantly recalculating for mm -hmm. you, your options, and not just telling you must do. And that, I mean, I actually used the tool tremendously because I had to plan through, I needed to be at a meeting at a certain time. I didn't want to sit for any of great extents. And I thought, well, if I get this much, and then once I got the fuel or the energy, it recalculated again for me. And then, of course, mm -hmm. if I'm driving like a um, very aggressively, let's call it that way, I'm going to burn the, the energy a little faster, right? So it's adapting spirited. for that. In a spirited, spirited fashion. Spirited way. Yes, yes. I'm going to yes. use that as my new takeaway. But <laughs> so it's it's all relevant. It's no longer just general information that you have to just kind of, you know, have a, you know, some margin of error on. This is real time connected and it's personalized to me. Now, the best part, and there's another little quick story I want to get to. So the car we talk about is Tech Forward, Sync 4 8, awesome new system, modem, cloud-connected charging, blah, blah, blah. Now, I have one key file that comes with this car. The phone is now going to be what we call a phone as a key. There'll be three other people that can use their smartphone that have access to drive the car mm -hmm. in addition to me. So there'll be four total users that will be able to drive the car, 
you know, with the ignition on and then go about their way. And when you set up the, you know, the profiles for whoever, like my three other family members, they're all going to be able to get in with their smartphone, start the car, but then the profile will be set up for them. Their habits, their learnings will be unique to them. It's not going to be mine. It'll be imposed on them. Mm -hmm. So now I basically have four personalized users with personalized experiences, learnings, access. So all of a sudden we've just expanded this user base. Then before it used to be just Lisa's profile, like when in my Ford Edge right now, when I get Mm -hmm. in, it tells me where I'm navigating to. Now it's because of the connectivity and the profiles that's going to just, just, it's going to open our eyes to how many people can actually use the vehicle, not just yourself. Lisa, so I find it fantastic. We're quickly running out of time. If people want to uh, get more information on the Mach E, where should they go? So, best source for Ford.com. Look up uh, Mustang Mach E. If not your local Ford dealer, they're all getting set up. EV certified dealers are ready to accept orders and or provide test drives once the vehicles show up. All right, Lisa Teed, brand oh. marketing manager for Mach E. We appreciate it. It's time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road cruise control radio is your on-air automotive magazine go to www.cruisecontrolradio.com for more information